Tonight, we are back at the undisputed boxing capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Our marquee matchup, a heavy-duty affair to determine the mandatory challenger for a portion of the heavyweight crowd. In our featured attraction, number one contender, David Tua will take on number two rated and former WBO heavyweight champion, Chris Bird, in a heavyweight championship eliminator. The winner receives a mandatory shot at the IBF version of the title. We welcome you to the newly constructed Cox Pavilion, an annex of the Thomas and Mack Center on the campus of UNLV. This will be home to the UNLV women's basketball and volleyball teams, as well as the newest entertainment venue of the world famous Strip. Tonight, boxing's debut in this building. The comforts inside much appreciated, particularly with the Mercury near 110 this afternoon. Tonight, boxing's big men take center stage in a prelude to the heavyweight championship. The winner just one step away from a shot at arguably sports' most coveted prize. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert, ringside from Las Vegas. Well, with boxing's countless sanctioning bodies recognizing countless different champions, with promoters and TV networks playing power politics, with multi-million dollar lawsuits at every turn, and courtroom battles as compelling as the action of the ring, the heavyweight division is often as chaotic as a comedy of errors. The present is no exception, largely because Hasim Rahman wasn't supposed to knock out the division's leader, Lennox Lewis. It's been a free-for-all ever since, and after all the legal punches have been delivered and absorbed, this is where we're at. Rahman and Lewis will be rematched later this year. The winner, especially if it's Lewis, will likely defend against Mike Tyson. While Hasim Rahman is regarded as the world heavyweight champion, that doesn't mean he's the only title holder. Rahman is recognized by the WBC and IBF. The former body ranks Mike Tyson number one. The latter will recognize the winner of Tua Bird as its mandatory. The WBA champ is John Ruiz, who is scheduled to complete his trilogy with Evander Holyfield earlier this month in China, but that fight was canceled, now on hold. The winner of that bout was meant to face Kirk Johnson. As for WBO champ Vladimir Klitschko, the WBO is the least established of the four major sanctioning bodies, yet Klitschko is viewed by many as the heavyweight with the most potential to rule with an iron fist. His number one challenger is also Johnson. After tonight, all the mandatory challenges will be established, and presumably, they'll each get their turn. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champion Bobby Chaz. And Bobby, the, the rankings and the recent turmoil in the heavyweight division will give two or Bird another shot at the title. You know, Steve, with the ranking system of the sanctioning bodies, I think it's almost impossible to justify, sometimes even understand how they put certain fighters in certain places. But something good has come out of this. No more token number one mandatory challenges. Somewhat of a throwback to the old days. They're making two top ten contenders fight for the right to fight for the title. That at least has the appearances of doing things in the right direction. All right, so it's the pure puncher versus the pure boxer as we take you into the dressing rooms of both David Tua and Chris Bird. Tua with one punch KO power, but has found out he can't always rely on the big hammer if things aren't going his way, as with Lennox Lewis. Then there's Bird, who tries to turn most of his fights into chess matches, which does not always translate into crowd-pleasing affairs. Two heavyweights with very contrasting styles to square off momentarily. And before we get to Tua versus Bird, as usual, we invite Showtime subscribers with internet access to score tonight's bout online in the boxing area at show.com. Your vote will instantly update the webpage. The results will be announced later on in this telecast. Online scoring will not influence the outcome of the fight and is only available to viewers of our East Coast feed. So to score tonight's fight and learn more about upcoming Showtime boxing events, log on to show.com. Once again, the address is sho.com. Well, we had hoped to bring you a co-feature between number four rated Robbie Peden and local favorite number three contender Augie Sanchez for the NABF and USBA featherweight titles, a fight that would also produce next in line for the IBF belt. However, yesterday, Sanchez was beset by kidney stones, causing cancellation of the fight. Disheartening, yet we still have what looks to be an intriguing affair. Let's get to it. We're set for David Tua versus Chris Bird, the winner, guaranteed a shot at the IBF Heavyweight Championship. Now we take a look at perennial heavyweight contender David Tua preparing for his night's work. Early in his career, Tua fought a slew of contenders, and ironically, Tua is the only fighter to have beaten both current champions, Rahman and Ruiz. 
But more recently, after securing the number one spot, the competition became easier, and it may have left him ill prepared for his title shot versus Lennox Lewis last November, which turned out to be extremely disappointing. Now comes stage two of Tua's career. This time, he'll have to beat only one contender, Chris Bird, to secure a second shot at boxing's biggest prize. To lose in such fashion that I did with Lennox, I, I can't take that. We have a unanimous decision. I, I messed up. You know, there isn't anything I, I can express what happened that night. All three in favor of the winner. Now I kick myself in the, in, in the butt every night uh, since uh, the fight. And still, heavyweight champion of the world. What went wrong, you know, I can't put my finger on it. But for me to, to learn from it, and I got to move on. To come back after the loss, uh, fighting Donnell Nicholson to end the fight with a knockout, you know, it's, it's a great feeling. Tonight's fight is very, very important. It's a do or die. I just want to fight. Tua continues his quest for that elusive world title belt. At least we can say this, if he receives a second chance, he'll have earned it. Now, when training in the U.S., Tua gets lonely. That's because his family is based halfway around the world in New Zealand. Different story for the Tua man's opponent, Chris Bird, who shatters the myth that boxing shouldn't be a family affair. Bird's mother and father work his corner, and his brothers and sister also fight professionally. Clearly, these birds stick together. I think I was six right there. And I still remember that big glove. No, no, uh, no cup, no mouthpiece. Look, look, I had my, my, my church socks so. on. <laughs> I have uh, five older brothers that, I mean, four older brothers that box, and uh, a sister that boxed too. So my father also boxed, so it's in the blood. As I got older, uh, my father just said, set a goal for yourself. And from that time on, four years straight, I, I was basically number one in, in the nation. And then I actually made it to Olympics. After the final, you know, I thought I'd be holding a, a gold medal, I was holding a silver. You know, you probably see dried up tears in the picture. <laughs> My style of boxing is very unique, I, I, I think. Now, I'm a thinking man's fighter. I am a, small, a smaller heavyweight, and I'm very competitive. My mother and father have been in my corner for so long to where, you know, I don't even see it as mother and father anymore. You know, for I know for people watching, probably think, hey, you got his parents on the corner. You better do right or you're gonna get a whoop. <laughs> Vitaly Klitschko. I didn't know he was that tall. I like, hey, I'm here. It's time to fight. I can't worry about, you know, he was 27 and 0 with 27 knockouts. They stopped the fight. I'm like, what? And when I jumped up, I was just happy. When I fought Vladimir Klitschko, I had a scratch corner. I, it would have been a totally different fight if I could see. And my father was gonna stop the fight at one point. I guess my brother Patrick grabbed him and, and pulled him down, knowing that, because he know that there was no quit in me. Just keep fighting to the end. You gonna, I know David too is gonna come with it. And I talked to him, he's gonna keep coming. That's what I'm making, that's what I want from him. Keep coming. The ways to beat David Tua for me is to outbox him. I mean, I can't, obviously I'm not gonna stand there and trade with him. My thing is to outbox him, out slick him. And, and I'm ready for the challenge. I mean, this is like a, like I said, a, a thrill for me, like riding that roller coaster. Yeah. This is a bird of a different feather. Here he is making final preparations. Bird of Southpaw who struggles to make weight in the sense that he intentionally overeats just to remain at 210 pounds. In a division of bone-breaking behemoths, commonly tipping the scales at over 240, the undersized bird relies on speed and defense. As a result, a handful of top heavyweights have simply refused to fight him. Nonetheless, tonight, he finds himself one win away from fighting for the world title after having won and lost a championship versus the Klitschko brothers. Back here with the Bobby Chez. Bobby, what do you think Tua 
and Bird might have learned from their championship experiences. Well I think David Tua very clearly learned that all that extra weight he had was hurting him not just defensively but offensively defensively slower offensively slower less punches output and he relied on the big one left hook and that was it. He realized that he has to get back to what got him here early on. The guy that knocked out John Ruiz who came at him in the 220s, 230s, relentless, good speed offensively and defensively, a lot of punches, not just the left hook. Now, for Chris Bird, it was a different thing. I think what he realized most is that some of these heavyweights today are just too big, too strong, and have too much weight. He needs to be literally pitcher perfect for every single minute of every single round. He's not pitcher perfect, he cannot deal with them. What he probably has not so far in the back of his mind is the idea that if he doesn't win and he came prepared tonight to be picture perfect but if he doesn't win he's going to have to go to the cruiserweight division if he wants to fight at championship level and be effective. Two guys with a, a lot to prove is Tua in top shape can Bird take a big heavyweight punch we shall see let's get your keys to victory for both All right, guys. Steve with a shot at the heavyweight title at stake we have two very contrasting styles ready to do battle. Tua needs to get inside by cutting off the ring. Can't stand outside and win. Also, keep the pressure on with combinations. Punches in Bird's face. And lastly, his signature punch, the big left hook. Here, Tua on the right against Donnell Nicholson. Now, even though Nicholson's not a southpaw, similar style to Bird from the outside as an orthodox fighter. He's going to close the gap starting with the jab and then cut the ring off with a double left hook, dropping Nicholson, and this fight is over. There he gets inside quick and a double left hook. The first one not clean, but the second one right on top of him. Chris Bird needs to set the fight distance, stand the outside, that's where he's more effective. And also be what I say, effective in his awkwardness, his style gives people fits. And lastly, keep sharp, keep up the defensive movement, he has to be awake at all times. Here Jimmy Thunder's gonna try a jab, and Chris Bird blocks and fires right back with a left hand to the body. After doing so, he unloads quick combinations to the head, and Thunder gets confused. Now you'll watch a total of about 15 or 18 punches, and Bird stepping around awkward again. Very quick, defensively and offensively. He's got fast punches, keeping his hands in the face of Thunder, keeping him hurt when he got him hurt. He's very quick, he's hard to hit, he moves well side to side. This is how he has to win in all his fights, including against David Tua. So with both fighters now waiting in the wings, we'll soon see if the heavy hitting David Tua can get inside and force a slugfest against the unorthodox southpaw boxer Chris Bird. There he is, Chris Bird.
They've enlisted the best experts in fitness and conditioning money can buy that will not see the same overweight, one-dimensional, easy-to-hit David Tua. What does this guy really need to show people tonight, Bobby? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. Many boxing fans, including myself, were totally enamored with Tua because he was so Tyson-like. He came at you short and thick with great power, great speed, good output, aggressive in your face. He got away from that. He, laid, he relied on one left hook. He was slow, punched less quickly, defensively was less quick. He needs to show this reinvent himself back to the tour of old. In sharp contrast to the musical ring entrance of Chris Bird coming into Guns N' Roses, welcome to the jungle. Will he be busier, more aggressive, be able to adjust? Remember, he had no plan B for Lennox Lewis. Will we see more speed? Will we see the right hand more? The combinations, the improved footwork, all of the above. We can only tell you to stay tuned to find out. Let's size him up as we check out the tail of the tape. Tua is three years younger than Bird, who turned 31 this past Wednesday. Tua gives away three inches in height, five-inch reach advantage for Bird. At yesterday's weigh-in, Tua a sculpted 233, down from 247 his last fight, Bird 214. Key rules, no standing eight count, no three knockdown. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth, it's a technical draw. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the Cox Pavilion in Las Vegas, getting ready for David Tua versus Chris Bird, let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the brand new Cox Pavilion here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is time for our featured bout of the evening, a heavyweight showdown for the right to fight for the title. It's mandatory war, and it's all brought to you by America Presents Matchmaker Thomas Brown in association with Cedric Kushner Promotions, Fight Night Inc., Sunset Station, Hotel and Casino, Showtime Championship Boxing, and the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the president, Hiawatha Knight, supervisor, Darrell Peoples, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Dr. Flip Pomatsky, and Dr. Luther Mack, with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Gino Signorino, Dr. Al Cabana, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, we have Jane Broadfoot and Jim Cavan. And our three judges scoring this bout, they are all from Las Vegas, Nevada. Chuck Joppa, Art Lurie, and Paul Smith. And the third man of the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Heavyweight Championship Elimination. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at 214 pounds. With a record of 33 wins, two losses, he has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the IBF number two contender. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim, joining us all the way from South Auckland, New Zealand. He weighed in at a ready 233 pounds. His hard-hitting record stands at 38 wins, two losses, 33 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the IBF number one contender. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the 
explosive IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion known as the Tua Man. Introducing David Tua. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Yeah, there questions? Yeah, this is 12 rounds. Please obey my commands. Let's go to work. Well, as Ron Borges of the Boston Globe put it, Bird can run, but he can't fly. Can Chris Bird escape the brutal power of David Tua? How will he react if Tua connects? Can Tua combine his power with the speed he exhibited earlier in his career? Can he cut off the ring and land his punches? Some of the questions going in to this fight. You can see just by the body on David Tua, there have been some major changes. He's down to a cut 233. Bird would not look Tua in the eye during the pre fight introductions and the instructions by referee Jay Nady. Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12. IBF heavyweight elimination bout. Now, even though two is the bigger puncher by far, I still think he should not be looking for one big shot. Well, he got a good left hook there to the jaw, did Tua. Coming off as the third punch, the three-punch combination. The third one landed clean. Burr told us he did not think Tua would rush straight in and try to take his head off. That there would be some semblance of a feeling out process, but it looks like Tua wants to go right at it. Go grab him. Go grab him that left. You also have to understand, too, with the mindset of Tua, Tua right now feels there's no way Bird can hurt him. If you have someone that can't hurt you, you have nothing to fear. That is huge. Will Tua's improved fitness translate into performance in the ring? There's a heavy left hand to the body. Bird's got to start landing some of his own combinations as well. He can't just run and hide, use that flicking defensive jab. He's got to stab it in there, get some points with it, and throw the left hand. Tua continues to be the stalker. Tua flat footed, Bird on his toes, but Bird absorbing a lot to the body. with that swiping left left right combination but soft punches by bird no effect no effect in as far as they didn't hurt to it but they are points and it's going to become a very big issue when it comes down to big power shots and those light punches to with the one punch knockout power but as he found out can't always rely on that if things aren't going his way don't suck don't grab him and don't hit him low Gets a left hand in. Tua continues to go to the body. Bird, the master of escapology. And he's very difficult to hit cleanly to the chin. Took Ike Bucci five rounds, but when he caught him, it was a brutal shot. Tua's maybe going to have to concentrate on the body for a few rounds to see if he can slow Bird down. seconds of the opening round. And a better first round for Tua as opposed to Burr. You won that round because you landed the only hard shots. What does it tell? You landed the only hard and good shots there. And I need a little grease too. Don't blow your nose. Sit back and relax. Don't, be aggressive. Don't let him out on this side. Okay? You got to step over there a little bit. You see, each time he turns and gets out, it's on your left side, right? So don't lean so far over here when you ain't here and ready to hit that body. Stay with the body, okay? Don't don't sit there and play that chest. Take him around. Just take him around. Keep your hands high. Yep. Hey, this your show, baby. This is your show. Okay. A little more water. A little, little more water. I want to keep hydrated. Okay, guys. 
just a couple of Joes. Joe Bird, the father of Chris Bird and, and Joe Goosen, the, the trainer in the corner of uh, David Tua. It is a family affair with uh, Joe's wife, Rose, as well, and there, Chris's mom in the corner. He's also got several of his brothers in there helping as well. Round two, Tua taking round one, as you can hear Joe Goosen tell him. Tua spent a lot of time in training, practicing stepping to the side and turning, because he knows the bird can spin out on either side. What he was practicing was turning and firing, turning and firing. This is what Goosen was talking about in the corner. When he turns out, turn and fire with him. He does look quicker than we've seen the last couple of fights against Donnell Nicholson and Lewis. Bird shakes his head, says, you didn't hurt me. It was just a stumble. Some opponents call Bird style obnoxious. Awkward, unorthodox, elusive. I'll tell you myself, Steve, I, I look at him and I watch him, and if, if my style were to fight him, he would frustrate me, he would frustrate a lot of fighters, because nothing is orthodox, nothing is traditional, and it is sometimes tough to catch that timing. But it's Tua who continues to pressure the 100% boxer, Chris Bird, who pecks with the jab and slides away. Little pity pat punches. Looks for the openings to step in and score with sharp, accurate combinations. Not a power hitter whatsoever. In fact, in baseball parlance, he might be called a punch and Judy hitter as opposed to the home run hitter of Tua. Now, there was a nice straight lead left hand by Bird. This is what he needs to do more of. Get Tua, get Tua's head up in here, and just keep the pity pad in here. Tap, tap, tap. He just tries to frustrate you. Take you out of your game plan. Again, to it to the body. That's good body work now. He needs to come. He has to come up the middle. To his big punch. Over the years, the explosive left hook. Looking to come back more with the right hand. There's a, a right-left combination to the midsection by David Tua. Now, I think with David Tua, he does both shots stay downstairs. He needs to take one or two up top, uppercut and the hook, see how effective that might be. Open Bird's defense up a little bit. Bird's been down four times in his career, two times against Vladimir Klitschko, two against Ike Vayamuchi. They both lost to Ibeabuchi and both beat Jeff Wooden. Those are their only two common opponents. Wooden's a southpaw, by the way. Combination to the body by Tua. See, I think it's important here, Steve, and especially in the early rounds, that Bird has to put a little more punishment back on Tua and not let him be so brave and walk in there unscathed. Like that. Maybe he heard me. Maybe his best offering of the fight. Good. We had that whole round. The guy got one little thing and you slipped it. I know that probably looked good to the judges. That last left hand, you know what I'm talking about? You slipped right there. I need you to whip back off those slips, okay? You still got to edge more over to your left side. You know what I'm telling you? You still got to, you can't let him out that side. That's the way he wants to go. Force him to your right more. Force him to your right, okay? And then start using your right hand more. Straight right hand. Start taking the lead with this guy. You know, hard fancy. You gotta start taking the lead a little bit more, get it a little bit closer. All right? You're scoring. Watch Bird. There's that lead left hand just stuffing it in the face of two, not letting two just walk in unharmed. You gotta put something in his face. They're not hard punches, but they have to be there. And at the end of the round, I think he heard me because he did it again right before the end of the round. Nice little jab to hold him off. And again, the left hand. He's got to land more leather onto his face. We have to leave the, 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 leave Nady, the ring on the whistle. Telling Joe Goosen and, and company to now, leave the ring on the whistle. A little tardy in the two a corner. The feeling is Bird has to win for 36 minutes for Tua. It's a one-second fight, essentially. Tua, dangerous every second for 12 rounds. Bird looking to aggravate Tua for 12 rounds if he can. He doesn't care if he hears the boos. A couple of the punches, Jay Nady said, were on the hip, which is not legal, once below the belt. So far, Bird has managed to stay off the ropes.
There's that escapology once again by Bird. Very slippery and elusive. He can't worry about Tua's left hook, he told us, or he may get nailed by something else that Tua's been working on. They saw a reasonable combination by Bird and Tua not respond back. What he needs to do after Tua stops is hit Tua. Make him take some punishment back. Tua with those heavy punches. Some of those were blocked by Bird. But they have to wear you down. The angles by Bird. Continues to peck away with the right. And a left, straight left to the head by Bird. Partially blocked, but now he came back with another three punch combination, some of which got through. That's how Bird needs to do it. Peck, hit, move, peck, hit, move, bang, bang, bang. Get three or four quick shots and move. Bird fighting smartly. Here's a straight left that landed by Bird. Now he pecks away with the right. That's adding to the nuisance, Steve. That's how he aggravates you. You, you blink, you hesitate, and you get hit. Go stand there for a second. You can't hit him with your hand open, okay? You can open to catch it, but you can't hit him with your hand open, okay? You gotta close your fist. And if the back, if you turn your back, it's okay to hit you there. Time in, box. Did you think he was doing that a lot? Well, what happens sometimes is punchers, they, excuse me, boxers, they use their hands to pick up punches. They open their hand so they can pick the punch and move it to the side. But before they get their hand closed, they smack with an open hand. That's technically illegal. Tua jumps on Bird. And a straight left hand returned by Bird. Bird did a nice job of blocking most of those punches, but the pressure and the power is going to eventually add up. There will be a cumulative effect. Comes around to seven, eight, nine. Should we get that far? Tua, who's never been down in his pro career and doesn't intend to go that direction tonight against the light hitting bird. So he can afford to be courageous. Bouncing bullets off the body of Bird. You see, I got water. You wear the mask, give me the water. Don't get jealous now. You keep this. See what you got going. You got to turn him a little more. Turn him a little more. He's flat footed. You turn him, you get time to this. Run your speed off and turn it. David Tua going to the body, one of his best assets. He digs underneath. And here you see that left hook to the side. The referee said if you turn your back, that's illegal. Still very hard to get clean shots at Chris Bird. You watch Bird shoot his speed, just shoot some punches down the middle right there. One, two, three, not real hard. Chris clean, they landed their points, but he needs to do a lot more of that if he's gonna beat off the tool man. Take a look too at that open hand where he smacks and slaps. Not a good thing, illegal also. Round number four. Tua coming off a training camp that was like a boot camp, he told us. What do you think thus far of his hand speed and his foot speed? I think his hand speed is better. I think his foot speed is shown to be a little better, and he's throwing more punches, which are all the things he needs to do. He's not quite back to the Tua that knocked out John Ruiz, though. In 19 seconds, Keep no that hand close. That's the tape that Chris Bird watched to prepare himself for David Tua, among others. But he emphasized the earlier Tua, the real dangerous Tua. Chris Bird's dad had told him to turn Tua more, which is good advice, but what he also has to do is hit him more while he's turning, keep him more balanced. Again, back away with those punches. Tua taking Bird into the corner, but Bird able to sidestep trouble. Straight left hand, another, a left cross by Bird that landed. Again, not hard punches, but scoring points. And frustrating David to it. Watch your head! Part of his game plan. Bird scoring. Having a good round. He's landed 
some of his cleaner punches in this round. David Tua getting a little frustrated. You can see in his face. And Bird avoiding the hits. Turning to him more, turning him, listening to his dad, keeping him off balance, making him shift directions. That's one of Bird's biggest assets. Tua still somewhat reluctant. Stop! To unleash the right. Please watch your forehead. humble and easygoing bird said he had prepared to be hit and hit hard by Tua but he will not quit no matter what often overlooked and underestimated there's a good straight left hand by bird it sent Tua back but Tua back with a big left hook to the head I'll tell you what bird turned his hands down and walked right in there left hook but firing back bird recovers well been able to get Bird on the ropes. Stop! That was definitely low. Low Keep blow to it. A caution by Jane Aidy, one of the premier referees. Good round for Chris Bird. Great round, nice left hook at the end. I need three minutes. If we're gonna win this fight, we can't leave any doubt, can we? Okay? We can't leave any doubt at all. You better work harder. It's the fifth round. You gotta work harder than you're working right now. Take a couple deep breaths. Here we go. They were gonna see David too. He's chasing Chris Bird back to the ropes this way. But what he doesn't do, he doesn't cut off the ring here or here. And what Bird will do is just spin right out and he gets away with it. Tua comes straight in again, straight in, doesn't step and cut off the ring, doesn't use the hooks on the outside. The first, and Bird just steps right out. They, Tua doesn't want to do that. He wants to cut that ring off. Have the left foot one way, right foot the other, and hooks your right hands to guard up top. I think now as we enter round five, Joe Who's Goosen is concerned that? with Box. Tua's focus and concentration, which can tend to wane from time to time, which has been part of his problem. I think the last round was the most effective round for Bird. I gave him that round. I thought he was the more effective. Landed more punches. Most of the big stuff was blocked. And he was able to do what we just illustrated, spin out at will. But as you know, Tua can be dangerous and in a split second turn the fight around. Yes, you could ask guys like Rockman who was ahead, or like Moscow who were ahead, and 10 seconds later they were sleeping. He has one punch knockout power, legitimate power. Tua with a victory over Hasi Rockman back in 98. Good work here by Bird. A series of rights and lefts to the head of Tua. It's something we talk about is kind of a gym term. Walk a man down. Sometimes with a guy so fast as Bird, you can't slip his punches. You just got to put your hands up, stuff his punches, and break them down. Bird continues to fight a very intelligent fight. That was low, David. Let's take a look at the uh, press row scoring. Graham Houston has it even. Kevin Ioli and Fiona Manning have Bird. I'll tell you, Steve, I thought the first two rounds, two were more affected. The last two, it looked like Bird was. Chris Bird really coming on the last couple of rounds. And now David Tua bouncing back with thumping punches to the body. Getting a little aggravated and not necessarily desperate, but anxious. Another caution from Jay Nady. Low blows by Tua. That's the second or third time he's warned him. So he could be close to losing a point. Nothing low, nothing low. Let go, let go, Chris. Well, Tua had Bird in that, 
in a corner there against the ropes. He had his arms to the outside and his feet able to step and move off so Bird couldn't escape so easily. Always on the inside, he's gonna be the winner. Too big, too strong. So, wisely, Bird looks to stay on the outside. But Tua closing the gap and forcing a ball. Big finish by the Tua man. Nope, not at all. You're fighting this spot, but don't let them roast too long. No. You're giving up 20 pounds. You can't let them roast. Keep wow. it in the center rain. I'll get the water. I can't get the water. Keep it in the center rain. Give me this. Get a good win. It has to go up now. This is where we wear this guy down. This is why we did the training we did, Dave. You have to get in his ass and stay there. You understand? You got the mouthpiece ready to go? Hold on. A lot more head movement, but I need you to get inside, Dave. Stay in there. Yes. Thank you. As we begin round six, scheduled for 12, IBF heavyweight eliminator. If Tua loses a point on fouls, it really could come back to haunt him. Although, he can be very dangerous in the later rounds. See, the later rounds, too, it's also, it's easier to throw a lot of lighter punches, which is the style of Bird. Tua still loads up, takes a lot more energy, and attrition factor could become a big thing. Straight left hand to the head by Bird. Bird measuring him out with the right, flicking the left. And frustrating Tua. From what you've seen so far, is Tua at least more dimensional, less one-dimensional than in the past. He's less one-dimensional. He's moving in more quickly. I think he's spending too much time bobbing and weaving because against a guy like this, it's hard to bob and weave. A lot of energy. Against a Lennox Lewis, his combinations and punches back are still going to have to be a little quicker because he has to close the distance of that long range. And there's also much more power for Lewis, so better but not great. That was a that low was blow low. by Tua. That was low. probably take a point away the next time, but he's giving Tua a lot of leeway. That's about the third or fourth time he's warned him about low blows. Well, I'll tell you what, that one was very close to being the borderline with the belt involved, but it appears shade low. Heavy shots there to the ribs and the body by Tua. And the pesky Chris Bird doing his thing creating a smile from the Tua man. See, something we also have to take into consideration, a lot of people lose sight of it. Big power shots count more than little tap-tap jabs. So it's not just a numbers no, game, but no, which punches landed and which did not. And again, Bird stepped out to it, did not step left and cut off the ring with his upper body hook or his legs. The corner told Bird to stay off the ropes. He's given up about 20 nothing pounds. Low, nothing low. So far, he's been doing that pretty well. But every once in a while, he gets trapped. But he's also been using the ropes for a brace, for a little strength to use as rest and fight off him and let Tua do the work. Fighting very smart off the ropes, this Chris Bird. Bird pacing himself nicely. Tua missing with that left hook. Just before the bell. All right, now look. Take that. Here, you want to take that right here? A lot better, Dave, but you still, you still cannot wait. This is, what is this coming up right here, seven? This is seven. Half this is seven. This okay, is here we go. Come on. Here we go. Take a couple deep breaths. I know you're warm. I know you're warm. Okay? This is going to be quite good then. Okay, now, Dave. We're going to take a look at some action south of the border. 
Yes, you know, that's on the belt line. That's that's a border. That's still a fair shot. That was on right on the B and Bird. A master of defense who watched the spin move by Chris Bird. Keeps that jab in his face, steps around him, spins him all the way around, full pirouette, and out. Gets a little smile from the tour man. Joe Goosen a little more pleased in that uh, two up corner, saying that's a little better. Well, the first third of the round, he came out and really dominated on Fort Well. He started getting tagged in the last third of the round. Tua goes right to it. Unofficial scores at the half. Unofficial score at the half for me. I have it uh, pretty much tied up. I have it exactly the same. 57, 57. Bobby Chez has it even through six. The judges all from Las Vegas, Chuck Chiappa, Mark Lurie, and Paul Smith. Let go, Chris. And again, if Tua commits a, a foul, a low blow again, it could really be trouble. In such a close fight. And some of the things that are difficult to keep in mind, the first, they said the first third of the round was on the full day to Tua. In the last fight in the last round and the last part of that round was a lot bird so you have to balance them out keeping your mind and work production early and late sometimes those close rounds can be huge a riveting right hand better right hand than we used to see from david too david too we finally see the right now a countering left hand of the head by bird Tua continues to be the the man coming forward. So now we're halfway through this round, in round seven, and most of this early work has been Tua. Now let's see what happens toward the end. And let's see if we see more of that right hand by Tua, which scored effectively moments ago. There's the right again off the noggin of Bird. Bird comes back with some pitter patter punches. Bird is scoring. They're not heavy punches, obviously, but you just don't know what the judges are thinking. Nice combination of the head. And now we have a combination. We have to factor in over this last minute and a half. Was Bird more effective than two was for the first minute and a half? Right now the answer is no. There's a nice ebb and flow. What Bird seems to be doing is letting Tua shoot his energy load early in the round and come back late in the round. And like look this. at this display by Bird. A beautiful flurry by Chris Bird. Seems to be a smart strategy. And it looks like Tua is sucking some wind right now. Well, that's how Chris Bird may intend to steal some rounds. They're close, but not even his. The man who had an Ivan Drago-type training camp, David Tua, breathing heavily. Big finish for Bird. Ain't enough. Water. Okay. Got it. It was good. It was good, but I need more. Okay. Okay. Get back. Okay. There you go. Take some deep breaths. Give me that towel. Towel. Give me that towel. Uh huh. Yep. Get to it right now. You can't let him turn you ever again. You cannot let him turn you outside again. You know what I'm saying, Dave? Don't let him turn you. If you keep him inside your arms right here, he, he can't do anything. He's just trying to score a couple of points here and there. He's not doing anything except moving and throwing a couple of shots. Don't even give him those, man. You're really out working. You're making the fight happen, but you've got to make it happen more. They gotta see you. They gotta see you perform, not him. Do you understand me? All right. Little frustration of the voice of trainer Joe Goosen. I'll tell you what though, good advice. Not let him, not let him spin him and pity pat him. Let him off stuff him. On the inside, he can't deal with that strength, power, and weight. As we enter. side by David Tua really pouring it on now and he's got Bird where he should be on the ropes. Bird's covering up and blocking a lot but I'll tell you Tua very effective with some of the inside work. And to Tua's credit he 
He's not letting Bird off the ropes. He's forcing him back and keeping him there. You'll see what he's done with his right hand as he turned him into a little bit more of a hook so he can bring Bird back in when he's trying to spin out on the left side. And finally, Bird able to spin out of difficulty, but then he goes right back. Takes a lot of energy for David Tua to do. He's not in great shape. He'll have trouble. Bird's landing some punches in these exchanges. Tua's got his hands way down, smiling at Bird, as if to say, You can't hurt me. The crowd really into the action now, as Bird looks to turn it around. And what we have to find out now, too, is are David Tua's big, thick, muscular arms tired? If they are, he's got problems. They're very low. Good body shot by Bird. Tua looking a little shaky right here. Bird continues to score at will. David Tua's arms are tired. I'm convinced that there is some fatigue in the shoulder. The heavy-handed Tua has heavy arms right now, and it looks like he can't lift them. I started to say towards the end of the last round that Tua started to look weary. And he is really sucking air. David Tua. A simple thing for David Tua to do now, although one so simple last side is Come in behind that Mike Tyson like straight grip jab. Use that to work his way in. Don't just walk in trying to duck and dodge the bullets coming from the herd. Again, Bird very effective with the right hand. Not much defense being put up by Tua. Beautiful jab by Bird. Nine, 10, 11, and 12. We got four rounds to draw now. Non stop punching. Somebody's got to do or die in here now. And it's got to be you. Do you understand? All right, Dave? Let this guy walk away with this here. He had one good round. That's it. I want you to come back. Speed, speed neutralizing the power. Quick punches, keeping two hands in his face, keeping him occupied. And Bird defensively getting out of the way before Tua can fire back. You know, one of the keys we talked about offensive and defensive speed. A very confident Chris Bird, a sense of urgency now beginning to formulate in the David Tua corner. You can hear it, the anxiety in the voice of trainer Joe Goosen. He said, it's do or die with four more rounds. You got to do something, David. Well, I think what he saw is the same thing that we saw and sensed that maybe his man's tiring a little. But toward the end of the fight, that is really, really awful. Especially for a puncher who relies on that accumulation with one-shot power. Manager Kevin Barry investing a lot of money in the best fitness and conditioning experts money can buy for David Tua. He's got to be concerned right now. Fans screaming that Tua low blow bird again. Well, even with all due fairness, the first one was on the belt. We saw that. I didn't get to see that one. Bad angle for my vision. A bird looking very sharp right here. Tua struggling. Beautiful left right combination by Bird. Graham Houston from British Boxing Monthly. Kevin Ioli, Las Vegas Review Journal. Fiona Manning, MaxBoxing.com. The scores speak for themselves. Yeah, we know you're going to have to look at 
with those score scores. I got to tell you, years ago, it was a pretty famous fighter by the name of Muhammad Ali who used to do a thing called a shoe shine. A lot of quick stuff that didn't really amount to much and stole rounds with it. And Chris Bird has mastered some of that as well. to be ahead of the fight. You just never know how the official judges are going to call it. Once again, David Tua cannot slip those punches, not just because they're quick, and not, even though they don't hurt, but they're also too many. Tua is tired, and he's a big, thick man. Hard to slip those punches. What he's got to do is stuff them, block, and fire back. The crowd chanting in unison, Bird. They have gotten behind Chris Bird. Again, dangerously, Bird in the corner. Pressed up against the ropes. His father, Joe Bird, doesn't want him there. He's fighting well off the ropes, though. He really is. And now he nods to the crowd. His wife, Tracy, loving it. And his son, Justin, by her side. us inside the ropes break it down well bird is doing what he had to do being defensively smart moving stepping off not getting hit clean the pity patty confusing numbers and numbers outboxing david to using his speed and defensive movement frustrating the man all part of his keys he's got a very awkward style and here he keeps showing you all the different angles things that we're not used to with the box fighters and i'll tell you he's being very effective especially late in each round Scheduled for 12, IBF heavyweight elimination bout, David Tua in the blue trunks, Chris Bird in the black. Bird has been doing a tremendous job in controlling most of the action, in confusing David Tua throughout. Tua trying to end it on one bomb, but Bird sticking to his elusiveness, his and angles, his boxing, and his awkward his last style. three or four rounds have unfolded, we see a pattern. To a tire, comes out early, a little strong after his minute rest. Pushes Bird to the corner, gets some shots in, most blocked by Bird. Then Bird taunts him with the jab. Pity pat left hands until we get late, minute and a half, two minutes into the round. Then he starts throwing his left hands, a good combination, taking to it out of winning the round. And again, the slippery Bird sliding along the ropes. This exchange as well. Two are leaning on Bird, but Bird, who obviously looks the fresher of the two, continues to score. In fact, Bird is hardly sweating. Oh, well, he's sweating, and there is some fatigue, but it's a different kind of fatigue. He's had to deal with a lot of weight and a lot of strength, but David Tua. So Barty said it best, fatigue makes cowards of us all. When you can't do something, even though you know you're capable, but you're just not in condition for it, it's absolutely frightening. But Tua going through that extensive boot camp. They seem to get the weight off, but they didn't get the condition no. factor up. There's Bird. Key differences. Seems to be in better shape. Condition, right. Under a minute, round 10. Straight right hand getting into the head of Tua. Bird continues to pile up the points. Oh, a big right hand by Tua. It didn't seem to face Bird. It's the best punch he's landed in probably four rounds, but it was just one and done. And Bird.
came right back, Bobby. There's a straight left down hand. The middle. Bird whips a right around to the head of Tua. So after that big right hand by Tua, it's been all Bird. Bird has been undaunted by Tua. You see, now there's a little bit of a role reversal. Although Tua still has one punch knockout power, he's not punching like he can hurt anybody. Watching a terrific fight, a completely confident Chris Bird all over Tua. A frustrated Tua whacks him after the bell. style out fighting the Tua man. Tua is also tired so his head is snapping back much more readily. Those soft punches now seem harder and he is frustrating Tua to death. You can see David Tua putting his hands down just missing punches and absolutely upset. Look frustration frustration that's exactly what that is. We've reached the championship rounds round 11. Bird hardly even breathing hard in his corner, Tua looking exhausted. And Bird just goes back to his elusive boxing style. Bird, who is uh, sort of underselling himself in our fighter meetings to us. We well, you know what? Has to, if, I, if we lose, uh, move down to cruiserweight, stuff like that. One of the things I was very impressed with, even though he was losing almost every round before Klitschko, he was walking him down until they eventually stopped it and awarded him the fight. He has the guts, he has the courage, he just doesn't have the real size, and that is sometimes a factor. You heard his dad in the corner say, listen, you can only take one minute, one split second of missing an opportunity, and you can get hurt. began as pure puncher versus pure boxer could end in pure hell for David Tua if he loses this fight. He's simply being outworked and outsmarted.
Bird trying to get out of harm's way, gets over the left foot with a good left hook, but fights his way off the ropes and does a little dance and shows us that he's uh, good. He's happy. Got it. Three minutes of your life. Come on. Now I'm going to tell you, Dave, Dave, this is it right here. Do you trust me? I'm going to tell you, you need this round. Well, you trust me? You need it. Do you hear me? He not only needs the round, he may need a knockout. Well, I'll tell you what, I have a lot closer to press row scoring, but I do believe he's in the, the dangerous area of the point of no return already, yes. A crowd of close to 3,000, close to capacity. Really enjoying the action here at the Cox Pavilion in Las Vegas. David Tua in trouble. right hand to again looking for that perfect punch. Looks like Tua has almost completely run out of fuel. Nice right hand by Tua. Got bird detention but nothing real quick. Desperate punches by Tua. Bird shakes his head no you didn't hurt me. We approach the final minute of the fight. Tua moving forward. Whacking away at the body of Bird. Under a minute. Tua belting to the body. Still working the body, but never really bringing the uppercuts in to play in this fight. A lot of hooks, not a lot of uppercuts. I'm shocked. Can Tua knock him out of the final 30 seconds? Now Bird's trying to taunt him to a little smiling, a little laughing, shaking his head. remaining. Tua takes Bird into the corner above us. Bashing away. That's it. And they are up here in Las Vegas. Bird says I've got it. And he is being saluted by this crowd. But it is now in the hands of judges Chuck Giampa, Art Lurie, and Paul Smith all from Las Vegas. And there is David Tua hearing the boos from the crowd earlier and looking exhausted. Now getting the hug from Chris Bird. You know, I hate you know you're gonna hate to hear this, Steve. But this fight is not as far off from a draw as you might think. A couple of those rounds were very close. Did you like the, the body punches and the power punches or the pity pads? I don't. I think that some of the press row were a little far out there for Bird. I didn't have a head as much as that. Although I do think he, I think he snuck it out in rounds eight, nine, and ten. I think those are the three key rounds for Bird. Very emotional scene right here. Chris Bird's wife Tracy. 
with the tears. Cam, this is for you. David say it's for you. I think many of joy. The one that Trinity is praying for me. This is for y'all. All people that's praying for Mikado. You know I'm there. Well, Bobby, in uh, response to your statement, nothing would surprise me. Nothing here in Las Vegas. A very anxious David Tua standing by for the scores. Here we're going to take a look to it on the inside. Tua had been throwing nice, sharp shots in here, shots in here. Watch his wild right hand that comes this way, and Bird ducks out of the way of it and it counters back, even though it's not real effective. But watch this big right hand. This is a home run ball. This is what we call a desperation punch. Tua looks for the big one right there. Misses Bird out of the way. Again, hard to hit clean with big shots. You've got to work combinations to beat Chris Bird. Bird fought such an intelligent fight, and it could be once again back to the proverbial drawing board for David Tua after this one. Yeah, you see what kind of boxes you like to work together. I think the keys rounds eight, nine, and ten. All Bird, and the fight was close there, but I think he pulls it out by seven rounds to five, and he needed that little streak toward the end to do it. Well, we're almost set to get it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., for the official scores. I guess it won't be no cruiserweight. Just man. The crowd chanting for Bird. Let's get the official decision from our man, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Paul Smith scores about 115 to 113. Judges Art Lurie and Chuck Jampa both score the bat 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner. And now the mandatory challenger for the IBF heavyweight crown, Chris Situation. So it's Chris Bird who awaits the winner of Rockmont Lewis, scheduled for November 17th. His wife Tracy ecstatic. It is Bird who's guaranteed a shot at the IBF belt. Let's waste no time. Get it up to Jim Gray. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Chris, congratulations. Was that a perfect fight? It was a perfect fight. First, I want to say one thing. This was dedicated to Dr. Camp, who just passed away. His last words was, go get him. I went and got him. Can you explain to our audience who that is? Uh, he was a, uh, Dr. Camp was a good, close friend of my preacher and very close friend of mine. He just passed away of uh, Parkinson's. We pray for the family. We love him. David Sage also. Chris, very few people tonight gave you a chance coming into this, and, and you kind of even downplayed your chances to us yesterday when you said, you know, if I lose, I'll just be a good cruiserweight and continue there. Was that just the possum? Yeah, that was. That was. Get people wondering, especially Max and Kenny on ESPN2. Yeah, I know. I ain't going no, on the I'm not cruiserweight. I ain't going on the cruiserweight. Why were you so effective, and why do you feel that you were able to keep David Tua from ever connecting on a big punch? Uh, just my boxing ability. I'm, I'm, I'm very hard to train for. I got a very awkward style. I'm a southpaw, and I'm very tough. He hit me with some great punches in the ring. I took him and kept going. Hit me with some good body shots, good head shots, but I'm very tough. I'm very competitive, like I said, in meeting, and uh, I wanted it real bad. It seemed as though you were very tactical. It, it, really, none of your shots, it seemed, Chris, hurt him, but, but you were able to keep peppering him constantly with the jab oh, yeah. and, and keeping him away. Oh, yeah, jab, jab. I was getting it, but that body shot, watch out for it. You better cancel Christmas. Your Tim father, Littles, you know. <laughs> your father kept telling you to stay off the ropes. You're giving up 20 pounds. Oh, yeah. I, what I, was I, the theory there? Because you got on the ropes a few times in the late rounds. Yeah, Max, I was talking to Max yesterday, and he was saying, you know, the I Bucci fight, I had separated ribs. Really, nobody didn't believe me going into the fight. I got, on, I got on the ropes this time. I, I was just proving that I could stay there for a little bit with the big guys. I could see punches really good. And uh, he didn't hurt me at all on the rope, ropes. Actually, he, he hurt me in the 12th round in the middle of the ring where, where they told me to stay. Now, you're going to fight the winner, or the mandatory will be the winner of, of the Lewis Rockman rematch. Yeah. What do you think those gentlemen should be thinking about? Uh, obviously, they'll think about their fight first, but uh, 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 when they come and face you, Chris. 
Oh, two great fighters. I mean, everybody get very prepared for me. And, uh, you know, they, got, they just got to be very prepared for it. Chris, stay with us. Uh, stay with us here, Chris. Let, let us get David before he leaves the ring here. David, what happened here tonight? Uh, you were an overwhelming favorite, and, and everybody kind of thought that this was an afterthought, uh, afterthought fight for you, and you would prepare for the winner of uh, uh, Rockman and Lewis. Well, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but first of all, uh, I thank God uh, nobody was seriously hurt. And, uh, you know, I congratulate uh, Chris for, uh, you know, uh, being a tough warrior. But, uh, you know, I thought I, um, I did enough to win the fight, and I thought if I wasn't pressuring, there'd be no fight. But, you know. If you weren't what? If I wasn't coming forward and pressuring and making, you know, throwing punches, there'd be no fight. But um, you know, he was making the fight the whole night. But he was very effective at keeping you at bay, and and you never really seemed to get off the big punch. Well, you know, uh, I think I was landing uh, the clear blows and the heavy blows in the ring, and uh, you know, I guess uh, they were looking at uh, a different scoring tonight. David, uh, it, much like the Lewis fight, it, it appeared to Steve and Bobby calling a fight, and a lot of the observers that you were reluctant to throw the right hand again. Was the shoulder bothering you? Was there something wrong? No, nah, I was well prepared. I can't thank enough um, to, the, to the team tour for preparing me for this fight. Um, I came prepared for this fight, and I can't take nothing away from Chris, but you know, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Did you lose too much, uh, too much weight? <laughs> I mean, you, you're down 14 pounds from your last fight. Was that too much too soon? No, I, I, um, I came out tonight and no excuses. I, um, I gave it my best, and uh, I guess they saw another fight and uh, another scoring for me tonight. So, But I'm happy. What will you do next? Well, I'm just going to have to go back to the drawing board and uh, come back better. David, it seems as though these elusive fighters give you problems. Uh, 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 what can you learn about these elusive fighters, Lennox Lewis and, and, and now Chris Bird? <laughs> Well, tonight I thought, um, you know, if you know he had that um, right jab of his uh, keeping me at bay, but still I was able to, to get in the, the cleaner punches and the punches that scored the, score the, the, the points. All right, David. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, this is obviously a family affair. Big time. You've got the mother and the father in the corner, and now you're in the ring. Now the wife. What, what, what does this mean to all of the Bird family? And you've got your little son right here, Justin. Justin yep. Um, it, it means more than I can even describe. I mean, not only is it, um, it's, it's a way for Chris to be able to, for his faith to be seen, you know, and then the way that he believes um, he can tell everybody now. He could become heavyweight champion of the world and he, and he can tell everybody how he believes and people have to, you know, they'll listen. Number one. Number two is just, for me, is probably the security of it, you know. It's like you get that big fight and as far as I'm concerned, he could have one big fight and retire. <laughs> that would be fine. Good payday, huh? Yeah, if it was a good payday. We'll work on that. All right. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. So Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. Let's go back to Steve and Bobby. All right, Jim. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Chris Bird, living proof that nice guys don't finish last and let's take a look at the scoring for Tua versus Bird Chuck Giampa Art Lurie and Paul Smith all saw it in Bird's favor 116 112 by Giampa Art Lurie and Paul Smith had a 115 to 113 for Bird a unanimous decision our unofficial judges in press row let's take a look right there they had it all for uh, Bird as well. You see uh, Kevin Ioli from the Las Vegas Review Journal and Fiona Manning represents MaxBoxing.com had it uh, sizably for Bird 118 110 and Graham Houston had it pretty close there. Graham from British Boxing Monthly Flash had it uh, a two point victory for Chris Bird and the folks at home are online uh, results for you. They had it Bird convincingly nine rounds to three if you took part in the online voting. Thanks so much for your participation. Looking ahead, let's see what boxing coverage is coming up in the near future here on Showtime. Outstanding boxing action returns to Showtime on Saturday, September 1st at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. We come to you from El Paso, Texas. It's the NABF Lightweight Championship as Juan Lascano defends his crowd against Julio Alvarez. Saturday, September 8th, we travel to Copenhagen, Denmark for a special attraction as Mike Tyson returns to the ring against Danish heavyweight Brian Nielsen. 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific for that matchup. And Showbox, the new generation, returns to our lineup Saturday, September 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific with two great lightweight bouts as Efren Hinojosa faces Joaquin Gallardo and teenage sensation Francisco Panchito Bajado takes on Eliezer Contreras. Always great boxing action 
right here on Showtime. So the undersized, underestimated underdog, Chris Bird, defies the odds here tonight. He had an S on his chest after all. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Styles make fights. David Tua has tried to reinvent himself back to the old David Tua. Wasn't able to do it. Put, took a lot of the weight off. His work ethic still wasn't quite there. Bird, Bird is his own most honest critic in that he knows some of the guys, like a Lennox Lewis, six foot five, that kind of range, that kind of power, that kind of size and height. It's going to be difficult to get inside, as he was with Klitschko the second time around. He was losing the first fight with the brother, Klitschko. Yeah. I think Chris Bird, as a heavyweight, has a really, really difficult task in beating a Tyson or beating a Lewis or beating someone of that size. I just don't know that he has enough weight to keep him honest. He kept David Tui honest because he had the reach, he had the height, he had the speed, he had the will to win, he had the skills, and he was in the right condition, and Tua was not. The first brother, of course, Vitali, the second brother, Vladimir, Vladimir. you were uh, talking about. So it's going to be either Bird versus Lennox Lewis or Bird versus uh, Hasim Rahman uh, for the IBF, uh, you know, heavyweight championship. Uh, I know you gave us a little insight there, but uh, do you realistically, honestly think that Bird could beat either one of those guys? I don't think his style is conducive to beating a Lennox Lewis almost no matter what. Lennox Lewis is 6'5". Too much height, too much reach, 245 pounds, too much weight. He can get there first. He can get there stronger, harder. I just don't think it's possible. Somewhat similar to what Vladimir Klitschko did, just keep my in those big bombs. It's too much weight. It's a Volkswagen having to move a dump truck. You, you can't get it out of there. T tonight he moved a smaller dump truck that he had to reach on, that he had the size on and height. So there are some differences. There are little subtle differences that make a world of difference when it comes to fight time in a different fight. Well, both uh, David uh, Tua and his trainer Joe Goosen uh, expressed um, bitter words with Jim Gray there saying that they, uh, they didn't think that uh, Tua had lost the fight. But one thing that uh, stuck out in my mind was that Tua said, I'm happy. How could he be happy after losing well, such an important he, he fight. He prefaced it slightly by saying he thought he did enough to win the fight. He was happy. I think he's happy that he got down. He's got his weight down. He looked better than he had in the past. All right. So that's it. Let's take one final look as we recap from Las Vegas. Our result, the IBF Heavyweight Championship Eliminator. It was the boxer over the puncher, underdog Chris Bird, victorious over David Tua, and now on the threshold of a shot at his second heavyweight crown. That'll do it for another edition of Showtime Championship Boxing for Bobby Chez, Jim Gray, and our entire crew. Hope you enjoyed it. Steve Albert, so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.